Uh, Stephen Hummel from Lisbon Golf Club. We're here, the beautiful surroundings of uh, the Hilton Hotel, you know, with uh, Eamon Logue. Golf's in a, good, in a good place here in Northern Ireland in 2013, isn't it? It is. I think there's a lot of, lot of buzz uh, from all our major winners, um, Rory and Darren, everybody. Uh, it's incredible such a small place has produced so many top, top competitors at this at its level. I see the kids uh, in, in Lisburn Golf Club and, and around the place and they're, they're really kicking off, they're really buzzing. The, our membership, our junior membership is just, I think they almost doubled it in the last couple of years and it's almost complete so that they can't let any more in. So it's, it's been brilliant for, for golf in Northern Ireland. Interesting talking to Colin there, he was saying that whenever he had young ones out, uh, it used to be the call that uh, who's your favourite player, Tiger Woods, but now it's invariably, you know, what, McDowell, McElroy, Clark, you know, some of the local lads, that's it's fantastic, isn't it? It is, and they're all good role models, I mean, they all, they're really popular, I mean, they're, you can see how, especially in the States, I mean, they look at, they love Darren, obviously, for the character, and I mean, Rory, very difficult to be at that level in sport and under the spotlight and in fairness uh, you know that the boys conduct themselves superbly now we take a look at it I suppose I have to say we're like who are we are we been spoiled for choice on occasions whatever the likes of the lads don't produce the goods at the at the majors and there's only four of them a year we're, we're almost disappointed have we any right to be disappointed whenever you look at it like that no I don't think so I mean golf you know each, each of those golf tournaments there's 150 or so playing and that's the best in the world um, and you know that I think we've uh, I think Ireland's won something like three of the last six uh, Open champions so I mean we're doing really well we're doing fantastically well um, but you're not going to win them all Stevie I suppose whenever you look at it maybe year, years ago uh, when some of the all-time greats were playing there might have been four or five golfers who you could say could win uh, a major or, you know win an Open but nowadays, you take a look at the the young breed through the sport. They're fit, they're healthy. You know, they take the game very seriously. Any any one of twenty, thirty could win a you know a major. It's it's different. I think they going back. I can remember playing and talk, listening to them talking about Seve and the, these guys had an aura about them. But the young guys coming through, they their mindset, they're able to win. You know, you see uh, Martin Keimer. Yeah, getting the world number one. These guys are, are quite young. They're, they're, they're climbing very, very quickly, and they have the tools, the mental tools as well as the golf game, to actually win. Uh, it doesn't put them off. They're not in awe of, of playing against the Tiger Woods and the Rory's and these guys. So the, the young guys, they have some little tricks they use, some mind games they use, and they're they are able to win. You see, we've had a couple of real surprises uh, in the Open as well in the last ten years, and, and that shows you what's what's possible. I'm going to talk about the Open very shortly. It's not too long to go to that now, but uh, uh, d- disappointing season, I suppose, for some of our top stars. I know we talked earlier about the fact of any right to be disappointed, but we do hope and we do expect the likes of G Mac, you know, and McElroy and you know Clark and Harrington, you know, to be there or thereabouts all the time. Yeah, I think I, I think we just have to be paid. Golf's a game. Uh, each one, I think, mean, Graham's been playing fantastic. Darren is, is probably Darren's you know he's getting a little older but his, you know his ability is, is unquestionable and uh, I think he's going to he's going to play well again he's going to have some success but it'll probably be sporadic as you know life goes on but I think we're going to have more winners in there Now we look ahead to the Open we already had uh, Justin Rose who won at uh, the US and we had uh, Adam Scott at the Masters and we look uh, we're, we're probably a wee bit uh, biased here like, but the British Open the Open certainly here this part of the world we would see it as being the really special one mm-hmm. yeah I think uh, the Open's just magical it's just something the history to the Open and you look back especially going to Muirfield who to be honest I don't know how many people have played Muirfield or know that much about it it's it's a very special place and it, it, it holds something that you know we'll all go over maybe and get a game at Turnbury or, or, or go to St Andrews but uh, Muirfield's something a little it's a little special so We'll find out. It has something that we don't know yet. Who's gonna? Could you could you put your finger and explain, you know, to the to the the viewers and the listeners what what makes it that be a bit different from some of those other iconic courses you mentioned there? Well, I think the like of your Turnberry is that you get some resort courses where we all are lucky enough maybe to get the chance to go and play. Um, But I think, from what I understand, I've never played Muirfield. But from what I understand, it's it's a very old traditional members course, uh, and it's just something that we don't see. I don't believe we've had any Ryder Cups there or any any events played there from time to time. St Andrews, you'd have the Dunhill Cup and other things going on. So, we're, you know, it's it's a treat every ten years or so when you actually get to see Muirfield played.
So it's a bit of a hidden jewel. So who do you think maybe uh, would be the people to look out for in this hidden jewel? Bearing in mind that uh, Tiger will only be will only be back in to play it after being off for three or four weeks with you know with uh, the bad elbow. Can, do, do you think that Woods can maybe turn up after being off for so long, or you know, in golfing terms, just go straight back in it? I think he can. I don't think he can set any limits on what Tiger can do. If he puts well, you know, if it, if his, if he puts well, he seems to be happy enough with his game. So um, when I'm looking at the, at, at, the, at the golf though. If you start picking the obvious, the, the top players, if Rory plays well, any of them putt well and play okay, they're going to be hard to beat. That's, you know, obviously Rory, Tiger, and that sort of. But the open throws up, playing a Lynx golf course and playing an open course, it's a different type of game than those guys are playing every week. And it opens the door for uh, a different type of player who can actually shape his golf ball and control his golf ball. Um, you know, Rory and, and Tiger playing the Masters, there's, there's shots there, you're playing over water, you're hitting the ball through the air, requires a, one type of skill, but the Open, uh, you're going to get different wind conditions, you're going to get different weather, um, things change with the morning and the afternoon draws, so I always think that's why you're going to get the occasional random, not random player, but you're going to get something unexpected, and I, I was sort of trying to see who would be interesting. On the American side, you'll see players like uh, Jason Duffner, who's been fun to watch, um, Matt Kutcher, uh, and Ricky Fowler, who looks he's played good opens in the last few years. Those players all look like win players. They all look very comfortable driving the ball, keeping it down. Uh, they 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 have that they have the type of golf game I think would suit a Lynx course. But as well as that, they're the players who look like they're ready for a major win, and they also look. To me, like they have the mindset, they're determined. They're never going to beat themselves. And in an open championship, that's the sort of challenge you're going to face. You're going to get waterproofs out one day, mix up and draws. It's a real tough mental challenge, a sort of challenge they're not used to. Well, if you're going to put uh, a bad tenor, you know, belong in and Logue here from Hilton, it'll be very hard to get a tenor off him. Uh, who would you fancy uh, as maybe your top three, and then ultimately your number one who might win this open? Uh, I would I would be going for I'd be having a little bet maybe maybe in each way but I would, the three Americans I'd be interested in I would uh, I would also maybe hazard Shane Laurie as somebody Shane Laurie has been climbing up he, he beat Rory in the match play earlier in the year uh, and he's won he won the Irish Open as an amateur on Baltre so there's a Lynx player nobody's looking at him if he if he plays well he could you know he could really come up and maybe contend up there um, it. I don't think it'd be interesting to see what the odds for him like you yeah, know maybe you know particularly if McLean's are playing what five six sometimes they play you know the top seven it'd be interesting for to see what the odds he was each way now he's won a Lynx golf before and, he, and he's climbing up and he's now entered into the world's top 64 or whatever so he's, he's somebody who's not really being noticed and talked about but I, I think he could be a good bet and who do you think you know overall I have to put your pin you down pick one I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Justin Rose to do two, because I think there's a guy who's got all. You look at all the stats. He's got all the shots, all the game. Hits the fairways. Got all the golf game. Not going to beat himself. And nobody's expecting him to win two in a row. But he could just be queuing up for a, a bit of domination. Sometimes you know we look at the likes of uh, our own people and say they're great ambassadors for sport. You mentioned a young fellow there, Justin Rose. What a great ambassador he is for the sport too. A real gent. Yeah, he's been through. He's he's done it the right way around too. He's he spent a long time in um, building up his career, and he continues to work at it. And it's he's a, he seems to be a lovely guy. Nice to see it done properly. But I'm hoping Rory and I'm hoping uh, G Mac. I'm hoping those boys have a bit of success. David, thank you very much indeed. Pleasure. Thank you very much.